Hi there, my name is Solomon David and welcome back to another episode on how to play the violin in 15 easy lessons. If you've not checked out my book, The Comprehensive Violin Method, which I have written to coincide with this free violin course. In this book, you can expect many free quizzes, tests, and pieces that you'll be able to play by the end of this course. Do like and subscribe to my channel, and I hope you enjoy. Hi there and welcome to lesson 4 on how to play the violin in 15 easy lessons. I hope you're excited for today's chapter, chapter 4. I'll be going through how to finally learn to bow the violin. So for today's lesson, do get your violin and your bow prepped for today's class. Alright, so if you have your bow and your violin out, we're going to jump right in. When it comes to bowing the violin, it's very, very difficult. Something to do with both your playing and your coordination skills. Of course, for today, we are just gonna focus on bowing the open strings. A lot of students, I think, even for those that are watching now, might have already tried to bow the violin um, earlier in the first lesson or the second, but that's all right. I'm gonna show you the correct ways you can develop good bowing habits and also some tricks and tips that I use to help my students keep track of themselves during their practice. Okay, one very important thing when you bow your violin is that I re-emphasize again on the need for good posture. So you're gonna want to make sure that we achieve the playing position again, <clears throat> as mentioned in the previous lessons, good and perpendicular to the floor. Uh, the next thing you want to do is when you have a good bow hold ready, you want to make sure that when you bow the violin, that the motion of your bow is traveling. Well, you don't have to be 100% straight, but try to be as straight as possible. Many times students trying it for the first time tend to waver. So their bows go something like this. As you can see, it does not have really good sound produced uh, when you bow uh, sideways. I call it the chicken wing. And the reason for that is because when you draw your bow on the string, for example, the A string that I'm playing now, I want you to look at my elbow. I'm pulling backwards, and that's causing the bow to drift to the fingerboard. One more time, I pull it down. And notice how I drift by pulling my elbow in a backward motion. So don't pull your elbow backwards. Instead, you want to pull it outwards, this way, outwards. So I'm going to do that now, like this, and keep it nice and straight. If you notice, as I bow, the most optimal place to be would be between the fingerboard and the violin's bridge. By doing so, you'll be able to maintain a good consistent sound. When the bow's hair comes into contact with the strings, we call it the contact point. The moment that it touches the string is the contact point. As a beginner, I recommend staying right in the middle you don't have to play too near the fingerboard or too near the bridge. Some violinists, if you have watched them play, uh, perform the violin, you might have noticed they sometimes play near to the bridge or the uh, fingerboard, sorry, the bridge and the fingerboard. And that's because by doing so and having different contact points, you're able to essentially create different sound levels and textures uh, from the violin. Okay, so let's try that one more time. Um, put your bow down. We're gonna start from the frog. Go down A. Make sure your bow has touched the A string and then you draw the bow. Outwards. Keep it straight. All the way 
back up, back down, and back up. Great. So if you're producing a good, nice, consistent sound, um, something like that, then you are bowing really nice and straight. Okay, if you don't have this sound and you're having more of what I call a duo sound, it just means that you're playing more than one string at once. So let me show you what I mean. When you play and you don't position the bow correctly, you might end up pulling more than one string. hear that? So this this is the sound that will be produced when you play the A and the E string together. I'm doing more of a wavering bow because this is what I notice from my students when they bow uh, the violin for the first time. They tend to waver between the A and the E. So with that being said, I recommend starting with the outer strings when uh, you practice at home. You could start either with the G or with the E. Yeah, and then only after you've mastered giving a good consistent sound in the G string and the E string, then you can move into the inner strings, A and the D string. Okay, so that's the gist of uh, bowing the open strings. Um, of course, uh, you're going to wonder how are you going to move from one string to another? Let's say you're moving from E to A. What's the motion that you're going to look out for? And that's what I'm going to show you right now. So a lot of this motion actually comes again from the elbow. You're going to have different pivoting points, like so, to get different strings. So the E string will be the one that your elbow is going to be the closest to your body, the A string, the D string, and finally the G string. So you want to make sure that you're not relying on your wrist to change strings. Yeah, none of that compl complicated stuff, you know. You're just going to make sure that when you change strings, your forearm and your upper arm moves together, okay? And this is very important because when you play a song, you're going to be changing strings really often. And you want to make sure that you are uh, bowing the same string that your violin, uh, sorry, that your fingers are placing on the fingerboard. Yeah, so I'm going to demonstrate right now how that works hand in hand with your string changes. Okay, I'll, I'll do uh, two G's, two D's, two A's, and finally two E's. Let's observe how this works. Okay, starting from the G again, you're going to place this uh, bow down on the G string. Never bow while moving. Okay, never bow while you're bowing. It's going to cause the bow to bounce. So make sure that you're fully sitting on the strings and then you pull the bow. Okay, here we go. G. That's two Gs. Now watch my elbow. Pivot to A, and finally let's pivot to E. I hope you caught that. So if I'm not mistaken, this is my G, this is my D, this is my A, and finally my E, which is closest to my body. If you're not producing a very nice, clean, textured sound, it could be because you are applying an inconsistent pressure. Something like this. Make sure you just let the natural weight of the bow sit in the string and use your arm to pull the bow. Okay, another thing is when you press the string, you can see that it's very sensitive. You're gonna produce a lot of scratchy noises at the start, but that's all right, that's all right. I, I, I think uh, as a beginner, uh, you're going to have to do um, some practice to overcome uh, bringing out a good quality of sound when you bow the violin. 
Yeah? So just learn how to get used to that flow, to that flow when you bow the violin. And one more thing you want to do is when you bow from the frog to the tip, you want to make sure that you don't stop moving. If you stop moving the bow, it's going to sound something like this. So it sounds really controlled and almost sounds like the violin is suffocating. Yeah, you want to breathe. Um, one good method and one good tip that I actually get my students to do is to breathe the same time as they bow. It does help in a sense when you do an up bow, you can do a breathe when you breathe in. I'll breathe in on an up bow. And exhale on a down bow. So uh, a lot of violinists, once they start playing pieces, they start to hold your breath. So I think it's a good thing to develop at the start of your violin journey to learn how to breathe as you bow the violin. Okay, so in my book, The Comprehensive Violin Method, I have actually included many exercises for you to play uh, the open strings for this chapter. I'm gonna be showing one right over here that you can do for practice. So let's try this out. So this one, you're gonna start on the G string. The next string you're gonna to move to is the A. So you're gonna put it down and do an up bow on A. Next is the D string. So you move to the D string, make sure you're all those upward. And finally, the E string. And there we go. One more time, let's try that together. When doing this exercise, try your best to bow from the frog all the way to the tip. From the frog all the way to the tip. Here we go. One, two, three. G. Now we go to A. Very good. And now D. Perfect. So if you have managed to follow my bowing technique, then you can produce a nice, clear, and defined sound on the violin. Be sure to check out the rest of the exercises that I have in my book, The Comprehensive Violin Method, and try your best to observe these do's and don'ts that I've included in this chapter. Okay, so one pro tip that I would like to leave you guys with is that when you do this, do try to do it in front of a mirror. So if you do practice um, just the open strings, do look in the mirror, because you'll be able to see all uh, the direction and angles uh, on how your violin and your bow is being uh, moved or placed, yeah? So if you see and you watch the mirror and you notice that, oh, I'm drifting, and then ah, you're gonna wanna fix that, yeah? So again, if posture is starting to fade and you start to drop your violin down like that, that also affects your bowing because you see gravitational pull. Yeah, you're naturally going to want to have the bow drift to the fingerboard. So it's always important that you can be your best teacher and uh, take note of all these bad habits that you want to not develop. Yeah, and focus on getting the right technique as you bow the violin. Okay, um, one remedy that you can do, and um, I say this as a technique that I actually emphasize on and teach to my own students, is that how can I actually prevent doing the chicken wing method, which is the drawback method, yeah? Well, one good method is I usually get them to stand next to a wall. It has to be a corner, so something's gonna block you here. So I just want you to imagine that this white wall right here is a pillar yeah so i usually get them to place their elbow on the pillar like that and then bow so you can't well physically you know face through a, bear, uh, a, a pillar sorry but um it acts as a blockage so that your elbow can only move outwards in this motion like that 
So do try that out if you feel that you're having trouble pulling it like this and you constantly do this backward motion. Again, it should be only in an outward motion like this. And that's how you can, you know, make sure that you bow the violin nice and straight. Not like Okay, great. And with that, we've come to the end of our fourth lesson on how to bow the violin. Do try to practice this quite often as it's something that should be passively and um, continuously worked on as a violinist. The next chapters, we will start to include fingerings and learning how to play different notes. So I think it's very, very essential for you to develop a good bowing habit. Again, thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.